Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week I'm taking my first crack at video game foods, which in the case of Zelda Breath of the Wild involves a big spiny f- Ow. A big spiny fruit known as ow- known as a durian. More on that later because I have a little something to share with you guys. I'm very excited to announce that I have written my first cookbook that is going to be released on October 7th. It's called Eat What You Watch. It has over 40 movie recipes. It's obviously going to be a lot thicker than this. And I'm going to give away five copies at the end of the episode. But in the meantime, we're headed out to Lake Hylia. Or rather, Cuca Lake, where I have recreated Link's cooking setup. It looks like a big steel wok set over an open fire. First up, mushroom risotto. We're going to melt some goat butter. And yes, I do mean goat butter. The only cooking fat available in Zelda. And I'm going to make this much like any other risotto. I'm going to start by sweating a whole chopped onion, adding a whole bunch of different kinds of mushrooms. I've got chanterelles, portobellos, shiitakes, and others. We're going to cook those until the mushrooms have browned and have expelled most of their moisture, and then I'm going to add a little bit of crushed garlic, maybe three cloves worth. Then before adding any cooking liquids, we're going to add the actual rice. This is our Borio rice, and we're going to toast it a little bit until the edges become translucent, and then we're going to add about a half cup of dry white wine. Simmer until the alcohol is cooked off, and then it's time to start slowly slowly adding chicken stock maybe a half cup at a time. You normally want to keep your chicken stock warm on another burner on your stovetop, but I'm just keeping mine near the fire. Keep adding a half cup or so every time you can drag your spoon through the risotto and see the bottom of the pot until the rice is cooked al dente or to your liking. Then we're going to add three to four metric tons of Parmesan cheese. Lots and lots of salt and pepper to taste. Make sure you used unsalted chicken stock earlier in the recipe. That way you have more control over how the risotto is seasoned. Give it one final stir. Risotto loves being stirred. And there you have it, Link's Mushroom Risotto, aka the first and last time I ever make risotto over a campfire, because while it was certainly tasty, it would be super way easier to make this over a stove. In that spirit, how about we try making some baked apples in this thing? I'm sort of rigging up a steaming environment, using water and foil to effectively turn our wok into an oven. I've cored and stuffed these apples with brown sugar and goat butter, and I'm going to seal them up tight and let them roast for about 45 minutes. Over a medium-low... Uh, campfire, I guess. 45 minutes later and our apples are soft but structurally sound. I've added another knob of butter for video game accuracy. And this was definitely tasty. Goat butter has a kind of cheesy funk to it that normal butter just doesn't have, but I'm missing my kitchen. So how about we head on home and try taking a crack at monster cake. I'm starting by making white modeling chocolate, which is six ounces of melted white chocolate combined with a quarter cup of corn syrup that I'm going to mix together until it forms a paste, wrap in plastic wrap, and allow to set at room temperature for 24 hours before removing from the plastic wrap and adding a few drops of monster extract, or at least the closest thing that I can get in the real world, ube extract. I'm going to keep adding more bit by bit until I get the color right and then preliminarily shape these into rudimentary horns. While those set, it's time to start making ube cake. I'm going to start by sifting together two and half cups of flour, three teaspoons of baking powder, three quarters of a cup of sugar, and a teaspoon and a half of salt. Whisk together to combine and set aside so we can assemble our wet ingredients. I'm going to separate seven eggs, putting the whites into the bowl of a stand mixer and the yolks into a separate bowl. This is so later on we can beat those whites to stiff peaks. Now to the egg yolks we're going to add half a cup of vegetable or canola oil, three quarters of a cup of whole milk or goat milk if you're feeling really frisky, and the tricky bit, about three and a half ounces of freshly grated ube yam. If you can't find ube, try to find white yams and add a whole lot extra ube, I mean monster extract, until you get that deep purple bokoblin guts color. Whisk to combine, and if the ube extract isn't enough, just go ahead and add some purple food coloring. Add the wet ingredients to the dry and whisk until smooth, and strap your egg whites into your stand mixer and beat until light and frothy. Then stop a mixin', lift up the mixer, and then add a final three quarters of a cup of sugar, I think that's how much I'm putting in there, before beating everything together to stiff glossy peaks. This is going to help give the cake a lot of volume and light fluffy airiness. But you won't get any extra fluffy airiness if you deflate the egg whites, so you got to very carefully fold the batter together. We're then going to pour that batter into some lightly greased mini springform pans. If you don't have these, just pour it all into a big old casserole and cut them out using a biscuit cutter. But either way, we're baking at 350 for about 35 to 40 minutes. In the meantime, we're going to make cream cheese icing. Eight ounces of cream cheese, four ounces of goat butter, beaten together in the bowl of a stand mixer before adding four cups of painstakingly sifted powdered sugar. Start the mixer slowly so you don't lightly dust your entire apartment in sugar and beat until a creamy frosting is formed. Now we're going to divide this frosting in half and to the first half we're going to add a little bit of our ube extract, a few drops at a time until we get a light purple frosting that looks monster cake accurate. Speaking of monster cake accurate, this cake needs something that tastes monstrous, so it's durian time. I left my mic on to share my first impressions of the 
the supposed world's smelliest fruit. I know this isn't the proper way to do it, but oh, yeah. Oh, okay, all right, it smells, it smells pungent. It's very pungent. All right, I'm gonna try some. Oh my god. That tastes insane. The aftertaste is really good. But when you first put it in your mouth, it tastes like fireworks. And I don't mean like on the 4th of July, I mean like when you set off fireworks like that. It's good though. I mean, I can't even smell anything now. Now that I've eaten some, I can't. I can't even smell it now that I've, <laughs> now that I've eaten some, I can't smell a thing. I can't smell anything. <laughs> Help! So we're gonna harvest about four ounces of meat from this thing and beat it into the remaining half of our frosting, something that I correctly anticipated would stink up the entire floor of my building. At long last, it's cake assembly time. We're going to pop this open and look how pretty it is on the inside, fill it with a very generous smear of our ube frosting, top it up, and prepare to pipe on some of our cheesy onion gunpowder fruit frosting. Then after allowing our white chocolate horns to have set in the fridge for a little bit, about 30 minutes, we're going to shove them into the sides of the frosting to complete our monster cake, which, if it's on this show, it's going to get cut in half so we can take a look at its pleasantly purple cross-section. Now, if you like durian, you're gonna love this cake, but it kind of overpowers everything else. It's a good way to try durian for the first time, but I ate most of this cake by plugging my nose and taking bites out of the bottom. Hey guys, so I'm doing a little giveaway to celebrate the release of my book. I want to challenge you to make your favorite dish from Zelda. It can be whatever dish you want, just take a picture and post it to Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter with the hashtag EatWhatYouWatch for a chance to win one of five pre-orders of my book when it comes out in October. With a grand prize of your recipe being featured on Binging with Babish Zelda Part 2 and this 8-inch Victoria Knox Fibrox Chef's Knife. You can also pre-order my book in the link in this video's description. Good luck guys, can't wait to see what you make. Don't go chasing waterfalls Even to the rivers and the says you're here still I know that you're gonna have it your way or nothing at all But I think you're moving too fast Ooh.